Hey guys, it's Golden Steel TV here. We're back with another Minecraft video. I got the short film done, and now that we're back to the Minecraft videos to make you guys happy for once. All right, we got some new people right here, including this guy who will be given a name in a bit, and uh, we got some lots of things we we got to talk about. First thing of basketball we're gonna talk about is uh, Carmelo Anthony. After spending a year away from the NBA, after being cut by the Houston Rockets, he Carmelo Anthony finally came back to the NBA, signing with the Portland Trail Blazers. And uh, it will be a one-year deal. Once it's up, he can re-sign with the team or go with another team. And uh I'm kinda happy uh Melo came back because uh I'm cause uh fans have been wanting him back in the league. But the reason I said kinda is because uh I'm worried that his ego could ruin his time with the Trailblazers. Not to mention that his ego drove away his coach Mike D'Antoni when he was with the Knicks, got him cut from the Rockets because uh, Melo is obsessed with the with getting the starter role, even though even though he's a little too old for it, and uh, yeah, his ego could ruin his time with the Blazers, which is something I'm worried about. But uh, I'm, but regardless, I'm glad he's back. And uh, in his first game with the Blazers against the Pelicans, he scored just 10 points. And uh, not only the Blazers do the Blazers have him, they also have a have a a duel of Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, and uh, they could be dominant in the in the court. And, uh, it's something I would like to see. Alright. Talking about Melo's ego makes me want to say this. Don't let your ego prevail over something you love doing, like being in a band or playing for a sports team. Alright, that guy's name is Alex, and, uh, that's his name that I've gave it to him. Alright, like I said, don't let your ego prevail over your band or sports team because uh it could ruin your friendships and relationships with bandmates and teammates and that's not good all right this is the train station for the t village floyd that i renovated to include fences to to prevent villagers from trying to board the mine carts uh all, to suddenly and uh I'm bored, and and uh, in order to make sure that villagers don't accidentally board board the minecarts, I decided to put up fences to prevent them from doing that. It has worked out pretty well. I haven't seen a villager trying to get in the minecart accidentally, and uh, that has pretty much worked out in the end. And uh, I'm glad that. That are that are produced a, a a desirable result. Okay. All right. We're gonna go for a a sale. While we do that, there's one thing we need to discuss, and uh, it has happened lately. It's the it's a fight that occurred during a game between the Browns and Steelers. All right. It all started when Mason Garrett appeared to be to be going at Miles Garrett, the Browns' defensive end, and uh, the Steelers' quarterback proceeded to fight Garrett, and uh, it got to the point that Garrett decided to to take off Rudolph's helmet and hit him in the head with it. No kidding he did that yeah that's right he he hit Rudolph with his helmet that he took from him 
No way, dude. And uh, if, and then it turned into a, an ugly fight that ended when the, the referees ejected Gary from the game along with a few other players that got involved. The next day, Garrett was suspended indefinitely, which includes the, the rest of the season and the playoffs in case the Browns do make it there, although I have doubts that doubts that I'm that they make it there. Based on the situation they're they're going through right now. And uh Mason Rudolph, France ple pleaded the M the NFL to suspend him, but he ended up getting a fine of uh, $50,000 instead. Both the Steelers and the uh, Browns were fined $250,000 respectively. And uh yeah. That shit turned ugly that it, that it brought upon consequences for both teams. All right. Yeah, it was a despicable act by Garrett, to say the least. Okay, uh, we found a shipwreck. We could go down there and look at it. All right, I just need to put on the night vision to see a little bit, a little bit better. All right, all right. There's lots of things to talk about, but uh, we'll do that in a bit. Okay. Let's explore the shipwreck. Alright, I just need to put on some night vision. Okay, that's better. Alright, we're going down. Alright, let's see what the shipwreck offers for me. Alright, we're almost there. We're almost there. <clears throat> All right, we're here, and uh, let's see what treasure they got, uh, what they got for me. All right. All right, let's see what it has. It has some iron, some emerald, some lapis lazuli, I hope I said it right, and some gold nuggets. I bet they got chicken McNuggets in there. <laughs> Just playing. Alright. Uh, let's see what they also got. They got some leather shirt, which is cursed, but I don't think so. Some paper, some carrot, poisonous potato, and wheat. Alright. That's all they got. There's one more chest we should open. <clears throat> A treasure map, some more paper, and some feather. All right, we got the treasure map. We can use it. All right, let's go find the treasure. While we do that, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk f a little bit more about things that have happened lately. Okay, uh, Miles Garrett did get to appeal his suspension, but his appeal was rejected. And then he claimed that Mason Rudolph said something racist to him, but Rudolph himself denied that he ever uttered anything racist to him. And and uh I don't know if it's true or if it's a lie, but uh if it's a lie then why why would he make it make that up to justify fighting with Ru Rudolph in the first place? So regardless, Garrett is still suspended, and uh, Rudolph has been fined fifty thousand dollars for the fight. Like I said, and uh, that's all I could say about the f about the fight. All right, 
All right, let's see if they got any treasure here. I'm not sure if they do have it, but I really hope they do. All right. All right, we're about to dig down for some treasure. Oh, there's nothing there. It's just a bedrock. And, uh, the bedrock is, is pretty much the end of the world, the end of the world, if you, if you dig down. If you do break the bedrock block, you'll enter the void, and after that, there's nothing down there that you can, that you can find. It's all just nothing when you when you reach the void. So so I advise against digging down and destroying the bedrock block. <coughs> okay. All right. We're gonna put the treasure map back in where it, where it belongs. Okay, talking about the MVP race, um, Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson are still in the MVP race, but uh, there's this one guy who who is the forerunner of the race, and his name is Lamar Jackson. I talked for a bit about him in in, in a few of my videos. But all I can say is that he's been dominant on the field lately from the games I've seen. And, uh, yeah, I really love watching him now. He's be he's quickly becoming my favorite quarterback to watch other than Patrick Mahomes. And uh, I hope he continues to be dominant on the field for the rest of the season. And can take his Ravens to the playoffs. I hope. And uh, that's one thing for sure that I will that I would like to see. Okay. We're gonna put the treasure map back to where it belongs. Okay. Alright. A couple more guys are on the MVP race. His um Michael Thomas, the receiver of the Saints. He's also been the race the MVP conversation. But uh and uh He's been dominant on the field even without Drew Brees when he was out for six weeks after a thumb injury. And uh, going through two quarterbacks when one, when the main guy was injured, it makes him, it makes him, it makes Michael Thomas the MVP, the, in the, again the MVP conversation because uh, he's gone, he ha because he has gone through the, the elements that the Saints had to go through when when Drew Brees was injured, and uh, it shows how that no matter if, if their store quarterback is out, he could st that guy can that guy Michael Thomas can still be dominant on the field. The other guy in the MVP race is a white running back for the Carolina Panthers. Christian McCaffrey and yes yes he is white don't I know that I know that don't don't even say that I know he is white so don't ask um Christian McCaffrey not only has been a dominant running back in the league right now he's also an interesting person because uh his father Ed played for the Bron in the 1990s as a receiver alongside John Elway and tight end Shannon Sharp and uh, the McCaffrey family is becoming an interesting football family to look at besides just the Mannings and uh, Ed's sons Christian um, Dylan I forgot I forgot what was what was the other one's name but uh his children could be dominant in the NFL. Christian's two younger brothers ha 
are playing college football and uh, if they could get to the NFL one day it would be weird but but interesting to look at these brothers playing the NFL you know just like the fam just like the Manning family playing in the NFL you know all right we're gonna take a look at another shipwreck all right continuing on the Manning family um just to talk briefly, I'll talk a little bit more about them in the next video or so. The Manning family is a family of, of quarterbacks uh, consisting of the father of the family, Archie Manning, who played for the NFL from 1971 to 1984. He wasn't Joe Montana, but uh, he was a solid quarterback during his time in the NFL. We got some emerald, iron nugget, and lapis lazuli. Alright. And some iron, too. We're gonna find some more. Right here. Uh, I need to put some night vision on again. Potato, leather cap, leather shoes, some coal. Okay, that's all they got. There's one more treasure chest we should look at, or not, but uh, let's see. Alright, that's all we can look at, but uh, okay. Alright, talking about the Manning family, Archie bore three sons. The first one was Cooper. Who should have been dominant in the NFL if it wasn't for the injury he sustained in college that basically ended his career. He played wide right receiver and is the only Manning family member to to not play quarterback. The Nets two sons, Peyton and Eli, are potential quarterback Hall of Famers. Yes, I said Hall of Famers. Eli is a bit of a more polarizing quarterback. Not only because uh, people debate whether or not he should be in the Hall of Fame, but because he won two Super Bowls against Tom Brady twice. And uh, meanwhile, Peyton had an had an illustrious career that uh, no no other quarterback will ever repeat again. All right, we found a ship, another shipwreck. They got some iron and uh, gold. Emerald and Lapis Lazuli. I hope I said it right, like I said. And, uh, they got some more right here. This, they got some more paper, gunpowder, carrots, and leather shoes. Alright. That's. Alright. Let's continue on talking while we go around okay all right all right i'm done talking about the manning family um christian mccaffrey uh since quarterbacks tend to win the mvp award nowadays um mccaffrey has less chance of winning the mvp but but uh whatever Regardless, but regardless, um, he's still dominant on the field as a running back. All right. Okay. One one other guy who's in the MVP conversation. Um, he's the most polarizing quarterback in the NFL right now. His. It's a guy from the Dallas Cowboys named Dak Prescott. Um, he's been the most polarizing quarterback in the in the league right now because uh, his Cowboys they've been falling off lately. And uh, what's more is that um, there are reports saying that Dak could get paid forty million dollars because uh, that's apparently what he demands. Because uh, 
he wants to get paid, just like um, his running back Ezekiel Elliott has already been, and uh, Amari Cooper wants some big money too. But there is one problem though. Um, the Cowboys coaching is one of the is the biggest question mark of the team during the season, because uh, their coach Jason Garrett, um, he's been harshly criticized by fans and critics because uh, because of the games we've seen lately against the Patriots and uh, and the Thanksgiving game against the Buffalo Bills. Um, his coaching has been put into question and uh, criticism that and it was so bad that there were reports of of him of Garrett losing his job after if he loses against the Buffalo Bills in a Thanksgiving game sure enough the Cowboys lost against the Buffalo Bills in a Thanksgiving game which was embarrassing to the point that Jerry Jones even cried in the locker room and that um, in the press conference he insisted that he won't fire Jason Garrett right now which could mean that he could fire Garrett later on after the, at the end of the season or at least after the Cowboys get eliminated from the playoffs but in my opinion Garrett should be fired because uh having been there for nine years nine fucking years his time is up um, people don't want him anymore he's I don't know why he's still there and uh, Jerry should fire him, like at least um, right now or after they lose another game. Okay, uh, that's all I could talk about the Cowboys. Um, uh, one last thing, one more thing I I need to talk about. Um, the 49ers undefeated streak came to an end at the hands of the Seahawks. The game between them went into overtime on Monday Night Football, and uh, it ended when the Seahawks kicked the field goal that ended the 49ers undefeated streak. Alright, that's all I could talk about the MVP conversation. I only wanted to talk about briefly of the uh, 49ers undefeated streak. Because, uh, it's something I had to talk about, because, uh, that has happened lately. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a look at the arena. It's been updated. And, uh, it has a hockey rink right now. As you can see. Uh, hockey, the hockey rink is a little too small, but, uh, I did what I could to make it a, a real hockey rink. What do you think of it? Does it look okay or not? If not... Let me know in the comment section below and let me know how can I improve this. Okay, uh... I'm not, I'm not a f huge fan of hockey, but uh... Um... I decided to make this a hockey arena. To make you Canadians and huge hockey fans happy by looking at it. Alright, this is the football stadium. It still has not been updated. But, uh, after the Super Bowl, it will be closed until March, which is when soccer returns. I'm not sure what can I do with it once it's abandoned after the Super Bowl. I don't know, make it an empty field and an empty stadium. I don't know. But let's just see about that. Okay, uh... We're gonna go home. I've wrapped up... I've wrapped up talking about... B football. Now we can talk about basketball. There's, there's this one guy... In the NBA who's been dominant. Besides LeBron, AD, Luka Doncic, Kawhi Leonard... Um... James Harden... He's an explosive score in the Houston on with with the Houston Rockets, and uh, 
in one game against the Atlanta Hawks, he scored 60 fucking points. I'm not kidding. He scored 60 fucking points. It's, uh, it's which is unbelievable. It shows that he's a dominant scorer on the court. And uh, I only wanted to talk about James Harden because of because of what he's been doing lately. Okay. Here's the black cat right here. And uh, that's all I can talk about sports. Now we can get to the end of the video. The, the village population is still booming to the point that um, in order to maintain the population number, I have to kill some of the villagers to to maintain a steady population number. You know, you know when you have a big village with a large population, it's hard to keep up with it. So I have to do what I have to do to control it. These are my cats Jim, Carson, Daniel, and Garfunkel for those who are new to my Minecraft videos and to this house. Alright. Okay guys, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.